devotion let us commemorate the lord's entry into the city of our salvation following his footsteps so that being made by grace partakers of the cross we may have a share all in his resurrection in his life amen Almighty, ever-living God, we pray that you sanctify these branches With your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. And now we have the reading of the of the gospel. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. As he drew near to Bethany, and at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. He said, Go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a coast tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you why you untie it, you will answer, the master has need of it. So those who had been sent went off and found everything just as he had told them. And as they were untying the coat, his owners said to them, why are you untying this coat? They answered, the master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their clothes over the coat, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road. And now he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. In the time before Jesus, they had the Maccabees. And they, when they conquered or when they defeated the, the army that came from, from Greece to, and to defeat them and to conquer Jerusalem, when they captured Jerusalem again, they had palm branches. And in their of the defeat of the enemy and in the recapturing of Jerusalem in their palm branches they cried out with joy and they read the psalms of, of, of thanksgiving and they entered into Jerusalem with great noise and great celebration 
Jesus with his palm branches and the crowd shouting out the stones crying out is because of the salvation that is being won by Jesus Christ the conquering of the evil one and the salvation that is being given to all and now we give these palm branches out and as we make our way in the church remember what we celebrate here reenactment as it is Jesus says that if the people are silent the very stones will cry out in exaltation because it is God himself who conquers evil and himself acts as our conquering hero so today as we have our palm branch let us wave it with great joy we, we don't want any listless Catholics here today. We, we want joy and, and, and celebration as we enter into this liturgy because what we celebrate here is at the heart of our salvation. It is God himself who conquers the evil one. It is the new Adam that conquers the old serpent. It is the Jesus who is triumphant as he enters into Jerusalem. The celebration of the Maccabees was the conquering of a city. The celebration of Jesus and the people in Jerusalem was the conquering of sin, of death, and of everything that is destructive. And today as we celebrate Sunday, we can't miss the reference of a little nation standing against a mighty force and saying to that night, mighty force, we will not bow down to you. As the Maccabees stood up against the mighty nation, so too we, we pray today for those of Ukraine as they stand against the evil that they face and the, the crimes and the, the atrocities that they are plunged into. And we, we say to them the courage and the grace that they need as they stand their ground and as they defend their nation. So let us celebrate as we enter into our church. Yes. 
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility, human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering 
and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply. To the wearied, he provides me with speech. Each morning, he wakes me here to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. From the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. 
His state was divine. Yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet. Christ became obedient for us unto death, even to the death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him and gave him the name that is above. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him, and he said to them, Passover with you before I suffer, because I tell you, I shall not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then, taking a cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and share it among you, because from now on, I tell you, I shall not drink wine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took some bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this as a memorial of me. He did the same with the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be poured out for you. And yet, here with me on the table is the hand of the man who betrays me. The Son of Man does indeed go to his faith, even as it has been decreed. But alas for that man by whom he is betrayed. And they begin to ask one another, which of them it will be who is to do this thing? A dispute rose also between them about which should be reckoned the greatest. But he said to them, Among pagans it is the kings who lord it over them, and those who have authority over them are given the title benefactor. This must not happen with you. No, the greatest among you must behave as if he were the youngest, the leader as if he were the one who serves. For who is the greater, the one at table or the one who serves? The one at table, surely. Yet here I am among you as one who serves. You are the men who have stood by me faithfully in my trial. And now I confer a kingdom on you, just as my father conferred one on me. You will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan, you must know, 
has got his wish to sift you all like wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And once you have recovered, you in your turn must strengthen your brothers. He answered, Lord, I would be ready to go to prison with you and to death. Jesus replied, I tell you, Peter, by the time the cock crows today, you will have this denied three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you out without purse or have a sack or sandals, were you short of anything? They answered, No. He said to them, But now, if you have a purse, take it. If you have a have a sack, do the same. If you have no sword, sell your cloak and buy one. Because I tell you, these words of scripture have to be fulfilled in me. He let himself be taken for a criminal. Yes, what scripture says about me is even now reaching its fulfillment. They said, There are two swords here now. He said to them, That is enough. He then left the upper room to make his way as usual to the Mount of Olives with the disciples following. When they reached the place, he said to them, Pray not to be put to the test. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw away and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, let your will be done, not mine. Then an angel appeared to him coming from him to give him strength. In his anguish, he prayed even more earnestly. His sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. When he rose from prayer, he went to the disciples and found them sleeping for sheer grief. He said to them, Why are you asleep? Get up and pray not to be put to the He was still sleeping when a number of men appeared, and at the head of them, the man called Judas, one of the twelve, who went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His followers, seeing what was happening, said, Lord, Shall we use our swords? And one of them struck out at the high priest's servants and cut off his right ear. But at this, Jesus spoke. Leave off, that will do. And touching the man's ear, he healed him. Then Jesus spoke to the chief priests and captains of the temple guard and elders who had come for him. He said, Am I a brigand that you had to set out with swords and clubs? When I was among you in the temple, day after day, you never moved to lay hands on me. But this is your hour. This is the reign of darkness. They seized him then and led him away, and they took him to the high priest's house. Peter followed at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard, and Peter sat down among them. And as he was sitting there by the blaze, a servant girl saw him peered at him and said this person was with him too but he denied it saying woman yes. i do not know him shortly afterwards someone else saw him and said you are another of them but peter replied i am not my friend about an hour later another man insisted saying this was certainly with him why? He is a Galilean. Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. At that instant, while he was still speaking, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter, and Peter remembered what the Lord had said to him. Before the cock crows today, you will have disowned me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Meanwhile, the men who were guarding Jesus were mocking him and beating him. They blindfolded him, questioning him, saying, Play the prophet. Who hit you with that? 
and they continued heaping insults on him. When day broke, there was a meeting of the elders of the people, attended by the chief priests and scribes. He was brought before their council, and they said to him, If you are the Christ, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe me, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. Then they, then they all said, For you are the Son of God, then. He answered, It is you who say I am. They said, What need, what need of witnesses, of witnesses have, we have we now? We have heard it for ourselves from his own lips. The whole assembly then rose, and they brought him before Pilate. They began their accusations by saying, From this man inciting our people to revolt, who was in payment of the tribute to Caesar, claiming to be Christ, the king. Pilate put to him this question, Are you the king of the Jews? He replied, It is you who say. Pilate then said to the chief priests and the crowd, no case against this man. But they persisted. He is inflaming the people with his teaching all over Judea. It has come all the way from Galilee. He started down to him. When Pilate heard this, he asked if the man were Galilean. And finding that he came under Herod's jurisdiction, he passed him over to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was delighted to see Jesus. He had heard about him and had been waiting for a long time to set eyes on him. Moreover, he was hoping to see some miracle worked by him. He questioned him at some length, but without getting any reply. Meanwhile, the chief priests and scribes were there, violently pressing their accusations. Then Herod, together with his guards, treated him with contempt and made fun of him. They put a rich cloak on him and sent him back to Pilate. And though Herod and Pilate would be, had been enemies before, they were reconciled that same day. Pilate then summoned the chief priests and the leading men of the people. He said, You brought this man before me as a political agitator. Now, I have gone into the matter myself in your presence and found no case against the man in respect to all the charges against him. Nor has Herod either, since he has sent him back to us. As you can see, the man has done nothing that deserves death. So I shall have him flogged and then let him go. But as one man, they howled. We with him. He was this man had been thrown into prison for causing a riot in the city and for murder. Pilate was anxious to set Jesus free and addressed them again, but they shouted, And for the third time he spoke to them. Why? What harm has this man done? I have found no case against him that deserves death, so I shall have him punished and let him go. But they kept on shouting at the top of their voices, demanding that he should be crucified. And their shouts were growing louder. Pilate then gave his verdict. Their demand was to be granted. He released the man they asked for, who had been imprisoned for rioting and murder, and Jesus over to them to deal with as they pleased. As they were leading him away, they seized on a man, Simon from Cyrene, who was coming in from the country and made him shoulder the cross and carry it behind Jesus. Large numbers of people followed him, and of women too who mourned and lamented for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep rather for yourselves and for your children. For the days will surely come when people will say, Happy are those who are buried, the wombs that have never borne, the breasts that have never suckled. 
Then they will begin to say to the mountain, Fall to the hills, cover. For if men use the green wood like this, what will happen when it is dry? Now with him, they were also leading out two other criminals to be executed. When they reached a place called the Skull, they crucified him there and the two criminals also, one on the right, the other on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Then they cast lots to share out his clothing. The people stayed there watching them. As for the elders, they jeered at him, saying, See him, brother. Let him see himself. He is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers mocked him too, and when they approached to offer him vinegar, they said, If you are the king of Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there abused him, saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and save us as well. But the other spoke up, spoke up and rebuked him. Have you no fear of God at all? You got the same sentence as he did. But in our case, we deserved it. We are paying for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, Remember me when you come to your kingdom. He replied, Indeed, I promise you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and with the sun eclipsed, the darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the temple was torn right down the middle, and Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With these words he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he gave praise to God and said, This was a great and good man. And when all the people who had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they went home beating their breasts. All his friends stood at a distance. So also did the woman who had accompanied him from Galilee. And they all saw this happen. Then a member of the council arrived, an upright and virtuous man named Joseph. He had not consented to what the others had done and carried out. He came from Arimathea, a Jewish town, and he lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. He took it down, wrapped it in a shroud, and put it in a tomb which was hewn in stone in which no one had been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was imminent. Meanwhile, women who had come from Galilee with Jesus were following behind. They took note of the tomb and of the position of the body. They then returned and re prepared the spices and ointments. And on the Sabbath day, they rested as the law required. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be your Lord Jesus Christ. On this day, we have this very long text of the gospel. And it's so that we have a sandwich. You know, a sandwich has one piece of bread on this side, one piece of bread on this side, and in the middle you have all the good stuff. Well, today we read the, the whole passion of Luke. Next week we will on 
Good Friday, we will read the whole passage of Luke again. And then, in between, we live through all of that. And we, we see how these events unfold. And in the unfolding of these events, we, we start to understand more deeply all that Jesus has done for your sake and for my sake. Luke's gospel is very special. And there are things in the passion that Luke has that other gospels don't have. For instance, a, the good thief being promised paradise. I don't know about you, but if I got the offer, I'm not sure who would finish Mass today. If Jesus came to me now and said, this very day you would be with me in paradise, I would be gone. Because that's what all of us long for. Live a good life here and find a way to be in communion with God forever in the next. And it's a good thief that was given that offer. The only one who ever has been. In our reading outside, when it says the very stones will shout out and cry out in praise to God, that's also peculiar to Luke. But there's another text that is peculiar to Luke that uh, I want to highlight today. And that's a very early in the Passion. Jesus says, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which will be poured out for you. And yet here with me on the table is the hand of the man who betrays me. The new covenant in my the new covenant in my in my what? I'm not here anyhow. The new covenant in my blood. The new covenant in my blood. What Jesus was doing during this time wasn't just an act of brutality that we did to him. What Jesus was doing during this time was a very intentional act that leads to our salvation. What you will celebrate is a new covenant. We know the old covenant on Sinai. The old covenant on Sinai was enacted by the blood of goats and the blood of bulls. And, and Moses slaughtered the animals and, and God walked through between and, and consecrated the people to himself. It was a magnificent event. And Ezekiel and Jeremiah talk about a new covenant. And Jesus says, what I will be doing is a new covenant in my blood. A new covenant in my blood. And that, that text is really such a powerful text. It, it speaks to the very heart of who we are. It, it speaks to what we are called to be. In another text, he talks about the, why, what he's really doing. He says that you are the men who have stood by me faithfully in my trials. And now I confer a kingdom on you, just as my father conferred one on me. You will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. That's another cryptic text in Luke. What is he saying? What kingdom does Jesus have? Just as the father conferred a kingdom on me, I now confer a kingdom on you. And this is to the twelve, huh? This is to the twelve. What is he speaking about? As the Father conferred a kingdom on me, I confer a kingdom on you. We know the kingdom of God is what Jesus came for. And what Jesus is saying to the twelve is as the Father has given me the kingdom, so I give that same kingdom to you. And not only are you, am I giving the kingdom to you, you will sit on 12 thrones and you will judge all of Israel. He's seeing the 12 
not just as 12 men following him, but as a reconstituting of the whole of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. And, and the apostles become the patriarchs, and they become the judges of the whole of Israel. He's giving them role and office. I want you to hear this last one. Simon, Simon, Satan, you must know, has got his wish to sift you all like wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And once you have recovered, you in your turn must strengthen your brothers. We all know Simon Peter. Simon was a man who could put his two feet in his mouth at a, notice, a, a moment's notice. He always had something to say. But, but here Jesus is saying something about Simon Peter that is critical. Simon, Simon, Satan has had his wish. And he will sift you all, speaking collectively to the twelve. He will sift you all like wheat. But he goes on. But I have prayed for you, singular, Simon, that your faith may never fail. And here we see now the role of Simon Peter, not just as one of the twelve, but emerging here even in the passion as the leader of the twelve. Satan has had his wish to sift you all, but I have prayed for you, Simon singular that your faith may not fail and when when you recover you will strengthen the brothers and here's the unique role of the petrine office palm sunday is such a big 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 feast and our readings are really long correct and by the time the reading done, you can't even remember the beginning or the middle. Correct? Come on. Talk to me the truth now, man. You can't remember beginning or middle. Every Palm Sunday, I give the same advice. The passion is so big to, to really journey through it. But you know, we could journey through it by looking at one character one character Simon Peter or what about the good thief what about or Mary what was Mary doing during this this time of the of the passion or, or Mary Magdalene or any of the the twelve let us pick one character and as we journey through this week, every day you ask where your character is. What are they thinking? What are they seeing? What are they doing? And journey with your character right through to Easter Sunday. And that way we could take this major, major passion and break it down to one person and enter into it a unique perspective. The passion of Jesus is important. It is through his passion that we have salvation. Amen? Amen? Amen. Without his passion, there is no salvation in judaism when they celebrate the passover one of the texts says we celebrate the passover so that it is as if we ourselves were in egypt and as if god stretched out his hands to deliver us personally from egypt and bring us out of Egypt and across at sea into the desert. The Passover, the passion, is not a recollection to memory. 
It is a reliving the saving action of God as if we ourselves were there. Put yourself in the scene. Put yourself in the drama. Put yourself in character and journey through this week. This is the most sacred week in the entire life of the church. Don't get distracted this week with all kinds of foolishness. This is a week to be focused on God and what God is doing for you and for me. So, let us really this week, let us really clear the week as much as we can. And every day, read the gospel of the day and ask yourself, where is my character and what are they doing? And put yourself there. Smell it. Listen to it. Feel it. Touch it. Experience it. And day by day, let us move towards these sacred mysteries that draw us to salvation. Amen? Amen. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in God who has brought us to know his saving works. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he'll come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. We come before God knowing that God hears the cries of his people's heart. Ask God to hear our cries and to answer swiftly as we go. That the church may be faithful to God's will and in times of trial show the same generosity and forbearance as Jesus did in his passion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That we may find through prayer and fasting the courage and vision to do all that is necessary to return to God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Pray for all who suffer from poverty in the world because of our excesses. May we find ways to change our lifestyle so that no one need go without the necessities of life to provide us with luxuries. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick and the suffering, may they experience the healing presence Christ in their loneliness and pain. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. That all those who have died may share in the joy of the risen Christ who fully shared in our human life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pause for a moment in silence for our own personal needs to God our loving Father.
Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously Lord, hear us. us. Let us pray together the Synod prayer. We stand before you, you Holy Spirit, Spirit, as we gather in your, in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Or him at collection, number one four, take my hands. Strength and guiding force to ever. 
Pray that your sacrifice and mine may be pleasing and acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand so that through, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet, by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for though the innocent he suffered willingly for sinners he accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty his death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification and so with all the angels we praise you and a joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of your son our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, our unworthy servant, and all the clergy, all the bishops of the AC region. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our hearts, look on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Or him at communion, number 28, 2, 8, Body of I am the bread of life. Body of Christ.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe. So by the resurrection, you may lead us to where you, will, you call through Christ our Lord. Do we have notices? Let's be seated. Good morning, sisters and brothers. Announcements for the weekend. Parish office will be closed on Thursday, 
Tuesday, 14th April to Monday, 18th April, the parish office will be closed. We do apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. In case of an emergency, you can call or WhatsApp 358 2127. 358 2127. Easter Tridum Schedule of Holy Masses and Services. Please take a copy of this week's bulletin for the days, time, and location. Stations of the Cross on Good Friday. San Fernando Hill, 5.30 a.m. Christ the King, Lesaphore, 7 a.m. St. Andrew Cagua, 5 a.m. Easter Tridum and Easter Collections for the Clergy. Kindly support the clergy by taking an envelope available in the newsletter boxes. This collection is pooled and used to support all priests in the Archdiocese for the period Easter and Christmas. Thank you in advance for your generosity, which you have given in the past. Hot Cross Buns. Delicious hot cross buns at OLPH, our daily bread bookshop and cafe. Please place your orders by Tuesday, 12th April. You can also call 653-4360 or see the bulletin for further details. Do we have anyone celebrating a birthday or anniversary? Today or in the coming week, we'd like you to stand where you are for a blessing from the Archbishop, Jesus Lord. Father, we thank you for blessing us and the grace of the gift of their lives. We ask, Lord, your blessings upon them, that this new year may be a year of grace, blessings and favor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace with Christ, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thank you to God. It's great to see all of you. It's wonderful we could be back again. Have a great day, a beautiful holy week, and turn to the mysteries. Amen? Amen. Choir. Our recessional is number 135. I am the way. 135.